Hey Sagittarius, though this month isn't necessarily easy right out the gate, I feel like you're actually resolving a lot of conflicts that is going to help you move forward in a much more smooth way, and there really is a lot of focus on resolving conflict and healing things and reciprocity, which actually feels really positive to me. We do also have a lot of focus on your finances as well, and you really could be making some big decisions regarding your resources or values. Before we get too far into your reading, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and the bell notification so you can always stay up to date with what's in the cards and stars for you. For those of you who are ready for a more personal, in-depth look into 2023, you can actually get 30% off any astrology reading on my website using the code in the stars through January 14th. You can find all of my links in the description box down below, including my services, astrology blog, and social media accounts. So the first cards I actually pulled for you were from the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit deck. We actually had three. I pulled the Lamb, Gazelle, and the Bear energy. And there really is this like very cozy earth energy I am getting, and I feel like that is something you're really going to be cultivating towards the end of the month. Um, I, I really get this sense, though, like uh, of calm. And it's funny because I feel like you've had some conflicts come up, especially since the end of October. It's been a very conflict-laden time for you, or maybe you've just felt disconnected in some way from the people you're supposed to be closest with. And I think you are actually like the calm in the storm in a really interesting way. And it's funny because I almost get the sense that maybe you said something that was triggering to someone or someone wasn't ready to have a certain conversation because the first card I pulled for you was the Page or Daughter of Swords and that was followed by the Seven of Wands. And so this is really interesting because it's like you either said something or you need to say something that might ruffle some feathers and it might even trigger some sort of defensiveness from people. And maybe you've even needed to stand your ground. But honestly, the way that this actually looks to me, standing your ground doesn't mean arguing or yelling at someone. It's more about you having a very firm sense of who you are, being very grounded in who you are, um, and, and kind of focusing on what needs to be done. I do have the moon here as well. And I, I really feel like this is kind of an extension of this sort of conflict that you've been in um, and, and having maybe challenging conversations or emotional conversations, perhaps even a lack of clarity. And this does make quite a deal of sense because we do have Mercury that's retrograde this month, in addition to Mars and Uranus. All of these planets are going direct, however, and so I, I feel like even if there is some confusion, I think things will really start to clear up, especially around the 18th when Mercury is going direct in the sign of Capricorn. Um, and I, I do think there are some really big stuff with finances, and I'll actually get to that in a moment. I pulled some cards that were separate because I feel like the spread I pulled initially was very much about relationships and one-on-one -on -one connections. Even though there is this kind of confusion or even like empathic reverberance or feedback is something I'm kind of getting to where it's like you don't even necessarily know if your emotions are your own or another person's. I, I kind of do get that confusion, which is interesting. Um, but we do have the lovers here. And it, it's funny because overall... 2023 is a very romantic year for you, and we have Jupiter in your fifth house of romance, of passion, and pleasure, and we actually did have Jupiter, which is your ruling planet, in the sign of Aries briefly over the summer. So maybe there is something that is returning from the summer or some sort of hearkening back to that summertime energy, and I feel like whatever sort of conflict has come up or whatever sort of energy has been... Um, maybe disrupted, I feel like that's being resolved, actually. And um, I think you're finding more effective ways of communicating and communicating desire and your needs, especially with partners. Um, but this could also be friendships as well. And to be honest, Jupiter isn't super active this month. I think the most activated it will be is on the 4th when it is forming a sextile with Venus, and on the 24th when it is forming a sextile with the Sun. Both Venus and the Sun will be in um, Aquarius when this happens. 
And for those of you who don't know, sextiles basically are opportunities. They are 60 degree angles between two planets in astrology. They aren't really the strongest interaction. Um, and it's funny because I almost get sort of like a playful, flirty energy that might be peppered into this month as well, peppering into this interaction, and maybe even like breaking tension with cute little lines like that I could actually see. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like there is something where it's like love and relationships can be really challenging sometimes. And I think honestly, like as a Sagittarius, one of your lessons is like, learning to allow that to exist. And I'm speaking as a Sag Moon, I'm not calling you out or anything. It, it's very hard for us to, I think, stay in emotions when things go wrong because we're naturally very easygoing signs or we, we value ease and we value freedom. And the moment things get complicated in relationships, it can almost make us question the entire relationship. Like, oh, I don't know if this is gonna work. We can be a little bit avoidant at times as well. Um, but I really feel like you are finding the strength and resolve to open up and be more vulnerable and to have these very necessary conversations with the lovers here. Um, and I actually do feel like this is a very positive omen for relationships. And we end off the month with the Six of Cups and the Six of Swords. I love seeing both of these cards because the Six of Cups is about healing, um, connecting to your roots, connecting to the past, finding sweetness again. And the Six of Swords is about leaving behind conflict, leaving behind battle, and moving forward to something that is more hopeful. And I think this is also interesting because we do have Venus entering into Pisces at the end of the month on the 26th. This is a very beautiful transit because Venus is actually exalted in the sign of Pisces. And this is really bringing blessings to your home and family. And I think this is also really helping lift your mood overall as well. If you do have a partner or someone that you live with that you have been in conflict with, I feel like it's smooth sailing from there on out. Um, so I, I really do feel again that there are a lot of things that are happening that are really helping you um, heal and, and find resolve in conflict. We do have some other things going on though, and I wanted to talk about this kind of separately. I feel like finances are gonna be kind of a theme for you this month as well. We are in Capricorn season for most of January. We have Pluto and Venus coming together in Capricorn right on the first. So there could be some very serious conversations about money and um, maybe even sources of income or just very serious like reflections and introspections. Mars, or I'm sorry, Mercury is also retrograde in Capricorn as well. And so you might be rethinking finances a lot. There might be things that you are letting go of or releasing or fine tuning. And really the message I'm getting overwhelmingly for you, it's like with the Empress and the Ten of Swords, I feel like you are ultimately abundant or you will be very abundant and prosperous here. Uh, but with the Ten of Swords, I really get this as like you cutting your losses. And actually the Seven of Swords makes this really interesting because maybe there is someone who is stealing money from you or maybe there is some sort of like fraud that is going on. Um, but I feel like overall this is helping you be more secure with your finances. Um, and this is actually a blessing in disguise. And I do feel like your finances will be resolved. For others of you, especially if you have investments of some kind, you might be tying up loose ends or ending things that have been losses. Um, and if this isn't even about money, maybe this is more metaphoric. It's like you are cutting your losses. You're no longer investing in things that aren't yielding anything for you with the Empress. Um, so there is the potential for some sort of loss or disruption, but I don't feel like that is a permanent thing. It feels more like making an adjustment of some kind. Although for some of you, I suppose there could be some sort of ending. I feel like there's more miscommunications and adjustments that are going to be required in order to move forward financially as well. Uh, the full moon on the 6th, in Cancer could also be representing some sort of issue resolving with inheritance or wills or even legal matters, um, which I could also kind of see with this kind of financial implication. Um, something is being resolved around that time. And I think 
Uh, again, this actually plays very nicely with Mars going direct in the sign of Gemini, your opposite sign on the 12th. There's just a lot of things that are resolving. There's a lot of issues and matters that are coming to an end. And I think you are actually moving forward by the end of this month. So that's actually very welcome. But I, I think it's just important to know that there are some very serious things financially that could be going on this month as well. And finally, we do have Uranus going direct on the 22nd. This is the day after the Aquarius new moon. And this energy is kind of interesting. Um, there, there could be this sudden shift or, or things that are being made clear to you um, spiritually as well. And maybe that's where there's like almost this spiritual awakening with the bear. And you are kind of coming out of a hibernation. Something is stirring within you. You are waking up in some sort of way. And you're really making changes to your mental health as well. And I think by having these serious conversations and navigating conflict, you are actually bringing a greater level of healing and awareness for your own life. And I think it's actually finding you, helping you find real and lasting peace with the lamb and the gazelle. Gazelle also does kind of remind me of Venus entering into Pisces. We were talking about this very cozy home energy. I feel like that's important to also ground this month as well. Like if you're feeling really just frantic or even hyper vigilant or looking for threats, I think it's really important that you are cultivating a space for yourself that is helping you relax, that is helping you downregulate your nervous system at night, helping you sleep better, um, and really just taking care of yourself. And with the lamb, I really just see this as peace with the flock. You are ultimately coming into, um, into more peaceful relationships. And all of this feels ultimately very positive to me for you this, this month. And really, for the start of this year, I think you're going to have a lot more fun. It's going to be a lot more lighthearted, especially the first half of 2023 for you. After a year that's been very focused on um, kind of mental health and behind the scenes stuff. And, and I, I think there's a lot more energy here that is just helping you enjoy life overall. So major quality of life improvements. Anyway, Sagittarius, these are all the messages I have for you this month. Be sure to hit like and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section down below what sort of conversations you're having, what sort of conflicts you're resolving, what you're letting go of. Um, I think that could even be a way of healing. You can also watch the videos for your moon or rising sign, especially rising sign might have some messages for you regarding astrology or in the cards. And I will see you all next time. Take care. Thank you.